Howdy, everybody. Here we are all ready to take you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner. Brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. Do you know what often causes excess weight? Excess calories. Calories are the measure of the fuel value of food. When the body gets more fuel than it uses, the excess food may be turned into fat. That's why the Horlick Weight Control Plan is so effective. It enables you to cut down on the calories and to cut down safely. Starvation diets are dangerous to your health. When you substitute Horlick's malted milk for heavy food, for a heavy lunch, for instance, you are perfectly safe in doing so. Horlick's is sustaining and nourishing, in itself a well-balanced food, and takes the place of a heavy meal safely and naturally. And now, about that big 8 by 10 autographed picture of Lum and Abner. Have you sent for yours yet? You can get one, you know, simply by writing your name and address on the back of a Horlicks malted milk wrapper and sending it to Lum and Abner, care of the station to which you are now listening. We'll send you one right away. Just remember to send in soon, as we have only a limited number of these pictures available. And now, let's see what's happening down in Pine Ridge. Lum and Abner are certainly having their troubles over the chain letters they started in Pine Ridge. Just as the hogs and corn were pouring in from all sections of the country, they learned that it is unlawful to start these letters, as it comes under the head of using the mails to defraud. Well, now the old fellows are trying their best to give the hogs back <laughs> to those who have sent them. So as we look in on our old friends today, Lum has gone to the county seat to see about shipping the hogs back. But we find Grandpappy Spears and Abner down at the Jot em Down store. Listen. Well, he, he ought to been back long ago. He left right early this morning. Yeah, well, Lum's awful slow, Grandpappy. It's got to where it takes him all day to do anything. Yeah, but that's right smart of a job, though, shipping all them hogs back to where they come from. Why, well, all he's got to do is just turn right around and ship them to whoever sent them. They're already in the crate. He don't even have to take them off the depot platform. Well, I still think you fellas used awful poor judgment, Abner, paying out all that money, express charges, shipping them back. Well, we ain't doing it because we want to. We're just trying to keep ourselves out of trouble. That's what we're doing. Me and Lum went over to Jake Wheeler's last evening and argued with him for two hours before we could get him to take that hog back that he brought us. Well, and I've got 20-some odd over at my place so far. I ain't worrying about getting in no trouble over it. Why, no, I reckon not. But me and Lum was the one that started that hog chain ladder. That's where they've got us. Well, there comes Dick Hudderson. Oh, yeah, yeah. And he's the one that told us about it being again the law to start them chain ladders. Yeah, I know. He said all along us fellas better let them things alone. No, he wouldn't have nothing to do with them. Lum tried to send him a chain ladder, and he wouldn't have it. Yeah, I ain't sorry a minute that I sent them a mine out. I'll swap one hog for 25 any day in a week. Yeah, it's a good deal, except for the fellers start the letters. They're the ones that catch it. Well, howdy, Dick. Yeah, come in, Richard. Well, howdy, Abner. How you doing, Pat? Oh, first rate, I reckon. Uh, Abner, Lige Jenkins was just down the store, and he had a bushel of corn for you and Lum. Said he tried to take it over to your place, and Cedric was sitting down there at the end of the lane with a shotgun. Wouldn't let him come on the place. Well, good for Cedric. He's tending to his job, then. Well, I said that he got one of those chain letters and that your name was on the top of the list and he was supposed to bring you a bushel of corn. Yeah, I know it, but we ain't letting them bring no more of that corn over there. There's two or three hundred bushel over there now that folks had brought and just left before we knowed what they was doing. Why, well, you and Lum started those chain letters, Abner, to get feed for your hog. I just supposed you'd want all the corn you could get. That's just what I told him, Dick, and he wouldn't listen to me. The very idea of him running a man off with a shotgun because he's trying to give you a bushel of corn. Well, now, we're trying to get out of this chain letter business. I had enough trouble trying to get them hogs back to everybody sent us one time, having to go through the same thing on the corn. Are you giving the hogs back, Edna? We're trying to. We can find out who all brung them to us, we are. Yeah, the lums in at the county seat now, going to all the expense of shipping every hog that come in there back to whoever sent them. Well, for goodness sakes, what in the world are you doing that for, Edna? Well, we're trying to keep ourselves out of the penitentiary. You said the other day over here that the giver man could lose for starting them chain letters. We just figured that the best way for us to keep out of trouble was to send them all back. Well... 
That's not going to help any sending the stuff back. You violated the law when you sent the letter out, not when you got the hogs and the corn. See there, Abner, see there, what did I tell you? Uh, you, you mean uh, it ain't again the law to keep a hog, son? Why, no, that's not going to help any, getting them back. If you've gone this far with it, you might as well go through with it now. Them's the very words I told him, Dick. Well, I wish to goodness we'd have known that before Lum went into the county seat. Taking my and I ever since we had for freighting them hogs back. They come from all over the United States. I said they'd won there from clean out there in California. Yeah, I hear Lum telling them about that. Cost her $17 to ship him back. Just about three times what he won. <laughs> well, I'm... Um... Sorry if I called you fellas to do this, but what I said the other day, but I was just warning you not to start any more of them. Because sooner or later, why, somebody's going to get in trouble over it. Well, I'll be dead blind. Well, it's a good thing I never turned them all loose, Ann. Mom told me before we left this morning to just open the gate and turn them all loose. We never knowed where they all come from, and we thought maybe that they'd go home by themselves if we just turn them loose that way. Oh, Sassy fresh. Hogs don't know the way home. Well, it's a good thing I never done it anyway. For I just happened to think after Rom left, we might have got ourselves in some more trouble over there. Why, right, sure. We got a stock fall here in Pine Ridge, and I'd have had to arrest both of us if I'd turned them out. Yeah, that's right. Why, no, Abner, if I was you, I'd keep every hog and every bushel of corn that you get. Chances are that nothing will be done or said about those chain letters that you started in the first place. And I don't believe, uh, though, if I was you, I'd start any more of them, because sooner or later, why, somebody's going to get into it. Well, yeah, don't you worry about that. I just hope I never see another one of them. That's what I hope. Well, I guess I better get on back. I just want to find out why Cedric was over there guarding your place with a shotgun. Well, uh, Dick, I'm glad you come over and explain it to me. Yeah, I am too, Richard. I know Dick's making a mistake trying to give all them hogs back. Uh, by the way, Grant, I nearly forgot here. I've got a letter here for you that come this morning. Oh, yeah. Okay. thought I'd bring it over. I knew that you might not get down to the post office today. Oh, well, thank you, Richard. That's all right. Well, you folks come down low with me. Yeah, we will, Richard. And so long. Well, that looks like Cecil's handwriting. Who? My boy, Cecil. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, that's who it is. Yeah, yeah, it says so right there in the corner. Yeah. yeah. After five days, return to Cecil Spears, star route 80, Oklahoma. Yeah. 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 yeah, I do know his ma will be proud to hear from him. First hearing we've had from him since long before Christmas. Charity's been worried to death. Oh, natural, natural. Is he still sharing copy in that place of his father-in-law? Yeah, I reckon so. I expect I better open it up and... See what all he's got to say. Yeah. Telephone charity and tell her the news. Yeah, go ahead and read it. I'd love to hear what he's got to say. I always like Cecil. Always said he'd make a success of himself. Fine boy. Well, yeah. I do know. He wrote with a typewriter. Yeah. That's something new he's took up. Well, starts out, dear friend. And well, that's a funny thing to call his Paul. Yeah. This charm was started in the hopes of bringing prosperity to you. Within three days, make five copies of this letter, leaving off the top name and address. And what in the world is that boy talking about here? <laughs> I know his grandpap. I believe he sent you one of them chain letters. Sure to yes, That's what it is. It sure as well. Goes on here to say, in omitting the top name and address, be sure to send that person ten cents wrapped in paper as a charity notation. <laughs> Well, I saw too, good it? Them things are just taking the country, ain't they? <laughs> Man, that ain't very newsy. Well, I don't know now. Cutter can tell her right smart by that. I know he ain't sick or he couldn't have written the letter, and he must be getting along all right or he wouldn't have had a dime to send off. <laughs> well, I hadn't looked at it that way, but I reckon there's reasoning all right, Grandpa. Yeah, I reckon there's lots of folks that's got letters from their folks and friends that they hadn't heard from well, years. Well, I'm coming up out there in front now. Yeah, yeah, I thought he's about due back. Yeah, well, them creeks might have been up. These rains we've been having us full of creeks something wonderful here. Well, Lum, um, you got back, I see. Hey, did you have any trouble, Lum? Um? Trouble? Uh, Granny, I ain't had nothing else but trouble. Well. Yeah. We're into it now, sure enough, Abner. What's the matter? Well, I went in there this morning to ship them 36 hogs a man said was in there, and he called yesterday, and by the time I got there, there's 80-some-odd. For the land? And still coming. I had the feller figure up how much it cost us to send them there 
They're back to where they come from, and it'll run to nearly $600. $600? Yeah, we can't send them back. By tomorrow, there'll be twice as many as there are today. And I know we can't keep that up. Oh, no. And now the corn has started coming in there now. Well, I, I guess that out now, Lom, and quit worrying about it now. <laughs> I've got some good news for you. Good news? Yes. Well, let's have it. Let's hear it. Well, uh, Dick Carlson is over here, and he said that it wouldn't do no good to ship them hogs back nowhere. No, Rum, he says it ain't again the law to get the hogs. The only thing they can get you fellas for is starting them chain letters. He don't think nothing will be dead about that. Uh, Dick said that? That's just what he said a while ago. Oh, my goodness. And we turned all them hogs loose this morning. No. <laughs> no, I never turned them loose, Lom. That's the more good news. We still got them. I just happened to think this morning it'd get the law to turn stock loose that way, so I never done it. <laughs> well, good for you, Abner. And Dick says he don't think we'll get in no trouble over No, him. he said he don't think we'll. Said to keep every hog and every <laughs> bushel of corn we get. Uh, Grannies, I know that was a good idea, that chain letter business, the minute I thought it up. Let me get to that telephone. Hey, what are you fixing to do? I'm going to call up everybody we talked to into talking them, taking them hogs back and make them bring them back over here to us. They already had more sense to take them back in the first place. <laughs> well, it looks like the old fellows have finally solved the problem of farm relief, at least for themselves. <laughs> Did you know that we have a limited quantity of 8 by 10 autographed pictures of Lum and Abner available? Grand pictures, too, showing your quaint old friends both in character and as they really are. If you get half as much enjoyment out of seeing the old fellows in this picture as I did, you're certainly going to want one. The picture shows them just as if they'd stepped right out of Pine Ridge. Quaint old Lum with his whimsical smile and his prized mustache. And lovable old Abner peering out from under that battered old hat of his. Just wait till you see them. You're going to get even more enjoyment out of their broadcast, too, when you see the old fellows as they actually are. If you want one of these pictures, and who doesn't, just write your name and address on the back of a Horlicks malted milk wrapper and send it to Lum and Abner, care of the station to which you are now listening, and you'll get one right away. Just remember to send in tonight. We have only a limited quantity of these pictures available. This is Carlton Brickert. Speaking for Lum and Abner and Horley, who now bid you all good night and good health.